controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you gotta do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power, humanity has the power, we have the power. Do you wanna fight? You better believe you got one! Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Friday, June 14th, 2013. And here's a quick look at what we got coming up. Tonight, Obama's national security advisor pushing the claim of Syrian chemical weapons has no experience except as a fiction writer. And the fictional narrative in the latest Rainbow Six game casts patriots as terrorists. Then ask police if they've got a warrant you get arrested. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, it looks like the man behind the Syrian chemical weapons claim is a fiction writer who ran the Benghazi cover-up. I'm talking about Ben Rhodes. He is the 35-year-old White House National Security Advisor who has no educational background in government or diplomacy or even national security. And wouldn't you know it, he's never served in the military. He does, however, have a master's degree in fiction writing from New York University. So that, according to the Obama administration, is good enough to make him the deputy national security advisor for strategic communication. That's right, if you know how to bull the American public, you will go far in the Obama administration. And you might recall that it was Ben Rhodes who created the infamous term kinetic military action. And this he used to describe the bombardment of Libya. And this gave, you know, Obama the green light to intervene without declaring war. And it was also Rhodes who played a key role in the Benghazi cover up. So, what is he up to now? Well, yesterday, Rhodes announced that the White House has high confidence that the Syrian army has used chemical weapons. Well, he didn't provide any evidence, but this will give the Obama administration the excuse they need to further the FSA, well, further arm, I should say, the FSA rebels in Syria. And, uh, you know, for those of you who do not know, let me make this loud and clear. The FSA rebels are being led by Al-Qaeda terrorists. The Obama administration is arming Al-Qaeda in Syria. And these are the same Muslim extremists who killed U.S. troops in Iraq. Now Obama is giving them you know, weapons to fight a civil war in Syria, a civil war that was created by the CIA or better known around here as al qaeda and you know, it's, it's no wonder that Obama needs a, a fiction writer as the White House National Security Advisor because I imagine it'd be pretty difficult to explain to the public or to convince the public that it's a good idea to arm Al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria. That, my friends, that's a tough sell. And, uh, but, you know, I guess it's not so difficult when the mainstream media, you know, they simply regurgitate everything they hear from the White House as the gospel truth. And check this out, Ben Rhodes, you know, the Deputy National Security Advisor to the White House. His brother, David, just so happens to be the president of CBS News. And that, my friends, that is how to sell a war. It's also a pretty good way to distract the public from the uh, wide assortment of domestic scandals that are going on right now as well. So, you know, while the Obama administration is arming al-Qaeda terrorist in Syria. Meanwhile, here in the United States, there is an ongoing media campaign to demonize patriots, constitutionalists as potential domestic terrorists. And you know, this all started when the Department of Homeland Security, 
They issued a study that characterized liberty lovers as terrorists. It also listed Americans who are suspicious of centralized federal authority and people who believe, Marcos, at the very bottom, if you scroll down, it says it right there, people who believe in conspiracy theories. Well, they might be a terrorist as well. And when you know it, in the months that followed, we began to see the propaganda machine in full swing. First, the TV network AMC, well, they came out with a television show called We Hate Paul Revere. Then there was a show on Fox, uh, what was it called, The Following? Yeah, there it is, The Following. That's where they portrayed constitutionalist and militia members as serial killers and terrorists. Of course, they were serial killers and terrorists. And you might remember Chris Matthews. It was a few months ago. He ran a special report. It was about right-wing extremists, hate groups, militias in America. Of course, it featured Alex Jones and basically said Alex is largely responsible for the rise of hate crimes and domestic terrorism in the United States. So those are just a few examples of how you know, they are targeting patriot groups. It seems like every time we turn around, there is a propaganda attack against constitutionalists and patriots. And now the propaganda is slickly disguised as a video game. Here's Jakari Jackson with a special report. This is for the homes you foreclosed on, the bailouts you took. We are the true patriots. The long in development Rainbow Six Patriots has been confirmed for the next generation of gaming consoles. I'm Jakari Jackson with an InfoWars news alert. Now, of course, the next generation of gaming consoles not only includes PlayStation 4, but also Xbox One, the same Xbox which is made by Microsoft, which has been alleged in the Prism scandal, which contains advanced tracking features in their unit, but that's not the point of this report. Rainbow Six is a highly decorated tactical team, as the InfoWars.com article points out. Team Rainbow faces a new and very real threat called the True Patriots, a highly trained, well-organized revolutionary group that claim the American government is irrevocably corrupted by greedy politicians and corporate special interests. The True Patriots will do whatever it takes to reclaim their country. It goes on to say, players will face critical scenarios that will require them to make tough ethical decisions in order to stop this new breed of terrorist. We'll get to those tough ethical decisions in just one moment. And keep in mind, this is the statement from the game's own publisher, Ubisoft. Now, InfoWars has well documented in numerous reports how the mass media demonizes militia groups. The real programming is happening with these shows like Founding Fathers, where the guy that's pro-gun in Texas and leading the militia, he's really Al-Qaeda, which fits into the, Al the whole narrative that, oh, it's white Al-Qaeda, or gun owners are really Al-Qaeda. This game doesn't stop with just patriots. It also goes after survivalists people who can skin a buck and run a trot line. We'll do exactly what we say or we will feel dress her like a deer. This game is a mirror for real life. Not only when conservatives and patriots are targeted by the IRS, but also when the Department of Homeland Security trains to fight the quote, free American citizens in an exercise. And don't forget about the DHS's no hesitation targets. Now back to those ethical choices, Shooting police is nothing new in video games, but when you play a game such as Grand Theft Auto, the action is viewed as criminal and is often optional. But you'll see in this trailer for Rainbow Six, not only is the act of shooting police encouraged, it is mandated to advance in the game. And if you think that anything in this report has been taken out of context, listen to the game's former creative director, David Sears. Speaking of those terrorists, who are they now this time? They're, they're homegrown? What does that mean exactly? They're, they're homegrown. Uh, domestic terrorism is a pretty significant threat uh, facing the United States. And uh, it's the idea that terrorists now look just like you or me. So it makes differentiating between you know, friend and foe a lot more difficult, which is totally new for Rainbow. Who was the first terrorist organization in the United States? <clears throat> Who? Founding Fathers. Founding Fathers. You mean Thomas Jefferson? Oh, yeah. You mean uh, George Washington? Oh, yeah. Paul Revere? 
And we'll end with the December 2011 edition of Game Informer magazine. It asks the question, you fought Nazi, Russian, North Korean, and Middle Eastern threats. Rainbow Six Patriots ask, can you turn your weapon on your fellow countrymen? I had to do. So targeting Americans, killing hostages, and shooting police because using a radio was too inconvenient, that's the new Rainbow Six Patriots. And many real patriots have not taken this lying down. They've gone to the Ubisoft website, their Facebook page, and their Twitter page, and voiced their disgust. I'm Jakari Jackson with an InfoWars News Alert. We will field dress her like a deer. So do you have what it takes to pull the trigger on a U.S. citizen? Huh? Do you, punk? You know, that's not only propaganda. That, that's conditioning right there. And look at that, man. They're, they're shooting cops, throwing a U.S. citizen, killing a U.S. citizen, throwing them over the, the bridge like that. So hey, you can learn more about the Rainbow Six Patriots video game. In an article posted by Adon Salazar at Infowars.com, it's titled Video Game Cast Tea Party and Patriot Groups as Enemy Terrorist. And it also has, you know, the um, video clip of the game at the bottom of the page. So, I mean, you got to see it to believe it. Check it out. Now, I brought something with me today for show and tell. And, um, well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this looks just like a bong. And, well, you're right, it, it, it is a bong, but it's also something else. It's also a felony. That's right. In Florida, anyway, uh, you know, because, you know, Florida Governor Rick Scott has signed legislation that will make possession of a bong, like this one, or even a wooden pipe, as a third-degree felony, this beginning July 1st. I mean, you'd have to be high, and, you know, to pass a law like that to begin with. But, um, you know, I've got the bill right here. Marcos, if you could show the uh, overhead cam. This is the actual bill, which is now a law, and it was approved by the governor. And they've even got a number of items that they list here as, as drug paraphernalia, you know, wooden pipes, glass pipes, bongs with or without screens, and a wooden pipes. That means J.R.R. Tolkien. I mean, that means you too, buddy. You were... Not allowed in Florida, or at least you, you would get busted in Florida if you brought a wooden pipe. Now, this is all illegal beginning July 1st. And why not? I mean, America already has the largest prison population in the world. Not to mention the fact that most of the people in prison are nonviolent drug offenders. So it makes perfect sense that we just create some BS... Uh, Laws like this to put more people in prison, right? Now, the traitor who sponsored the bill to begin with is Democrat Daryl Rousen from St. Petersburg. I mean, this guy is so out of touch, or, or more like so out of control, that he publicly referred to some types of bongs. He called them utensils of death. And I think we got a quote of him from the Huffington Post. He said, rather than just regulating them, let's just ban them. If we can make people drive to Georgia and Alabama and South Carolina to get fireworks, well, they can drive to get these, ut <laughs> these utensils of death. But I wouldn't bring them back across the Florida state line because, well, you might end up in prison. Well, uh, think about it. Possession of a bong like this, by the way, this isn't mine. Uh, if I had a bong, this is kind of girly. <laughs> if I had a bong, I don't, I don't think it would look like that. But anyway, you know, this is uh, a felony, third-degree felony, and that could mean five years in prison as well. And I was talking to Marcos Morales before the show. Now, he's our program director and the man behind the switchboard. And, Marcos, you and I were talking about how, you know, the majority of the American people, they support the legalization of marijuana, and now you were telling me about this guy, I guess he's an ex-CEO from Microsoft. He wants to franchise weed distribution as a corporate business model. Tell me more, a little bit more about that. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. So apparently in this corner of the country in Florida, we've got the guys who are trying to make money by destroying society. You know, they're trying to destroy people who can contribute to, to society in order to get money from 
fines, sending them through the prison system. It's the corporate prison system. It's the corporate prison Like we don't have enough people in prison already. Exactly. And this, on, on this other note here, we've got this guy in uh, Seattle, ex-Microsoft uh, executive. He's trying to ma raise money for funding. So right now it seems more of like a, a, a scheme to uh, get investment money going. But he's uh, trying to turn it into a, a business model that, you know, a capitalist would dream of. This is you, you'd be getting it on, in on the ground floor before this thing. So gets okay, hit. so this is like the whole legalization of marijuana. So a lot of people are going to look at this and think this is a good thing, right? I mean, because this is like the the Starbucks of marijuana. Is that am I following you right? Yeah, that's what this guy's. That's what this guy's going to do. He wants to. He he wants to overcharge you. Obviously, just like Starbucks does, he wants to overcharge you for for something that you could get better, cheaper somewhere. Right. So I'm not I'm not advocating this guy's new uh, business venture at all. It's just you know you've got these two polarizing opposites. On one end of the spectrum, th there's a societally destructive method of of criminalizing people who who use something that's proven to to have medical properties, which is the whole reason they made it Schedule 1 is because they said there's no medical properties. When most, you know, you can go anywhere in the country, even in places where medical marijuana is not legal, and a doctor will say you should probably get some get some weed to help you, you know, with your appetite, someone on chemotherapy or something like that. Oh, absolutely. This is, this is the polarizing opposites we've got, polarizing opinions running through our country that are, are uh, dividing us when really we need to approach it from a scientifically analytical value like why are why do we want to keep people away from the weed and why why do we want to criminalize it what what's the studies that show that criminalizing it even you know affects society in a positive way the only positive outcomes really are if you're investing in these uh in these you know private incarceration systems you know private prison systems that's that's really the way they're trying to the people in Florida the governor in Florida is trying to push it like that mindset is destructive to society whereas this other guy the 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 Microsoft exec guy is taking it from the approach of here's an untapped business model here's something that we can get you know get going in the nation it's funny because it, it, one of his plans is to franchise it interstate you know he wants to go across state lines but uh, according to federal law since it's not legally federally <laughs> you can't have a, a company that spans interstate that collects revenue for distributing marijuana this is prohibition and they want to keep it like that so it should be interesting i think what it is is i think they're they're afraid that that like you said the majority of the population they think marijuana should be decriminalized right and then as that as this is starting to happen we're, we're getting uh, you know medical marijuana is being um you know, all over the United States. Uh, how many states do we got now that, that are that marijuana is legalized? The only destructive part of the of this whole this whole plant. The only legitimate explanation anybody can come up with of why this is negative is because it could land you in jail and it could ruin your future. So the laws associated with it are the most hazardous things attached to this plant. And at the same time, it's a third-degree felony if you get busted with a pipe or a bong in the state of Florida. Unbelievable. Thank you, Governor Rick Scott. Um, you know, he's out there whoring for the corporate prison system. And Rick Scott, I mean, this guy, he's like the Benedict Arnold of the Tea Party because, you know, it was the Tea Party that was largely responsible for getting him elected to begin with, you know, something that they regret now. Because, you know, now that he's in office, he's turned out to be a very bad man. Don't forget, this is the guy who had Sheriff Nicholas Finch arrested for defending the Second Amendment. And, uh, you know, the sheriff was booked and thrown in his own jail and charged with official misconduct for releasing a gun owner from jail. Now, this guy had been arrested during a traffic stop, routine traffic stop, and after they found out he had a a holstered revolver on the front seat he was taken to jail but then when the good sheriff found out he was released and they gave him his gun back because well you know the sheriff believes in your second amendment rights and he ended up ended up in his own jail as a result i mean what on earth is going on out there in florida 
Well, unfortunately, it's, it's not much different than what's going on out there in Slayton, Texas, where a woman was arrested on her front doorstep when she asked the police for a warrant when they came to pick up her 11-year-old son. That's right. Now, apparently, her 11-year-old son was being investigated for some type of criminal conduct. The police showed up at her front door. They wanted to pick the kid up, said they had a warrant. She told them she wanted to see it. And since, you know, they never had a warrant to begin with, they arrested her instead for not cooperating with the police. ...to apprehend your son, and I asked him again. I said, I understand that. Can I see your orders? Um, he immediately got mad, put his finger in my face, um, started yelling. I will accept an apology, but what is that going to do? It's not going to take my picture off of the Internet sites that have been posted um, from being published in the newspaper, from where I work. I mean, it's just, I've never been in trouble in 32 years of my life from anything, you know, and to get thrown in jail because I ask a question is not right. And by the way, the police in Slayton said they will apologize if she drops the charges. So uh, praise, hail, Slayton. Now, uh, coming up next, we got another report by our very own John Bound. And, uh, you know, he's a reporter and producer for InfoWars. And, well, he's been very, very busy lately because he has been covering and investigating the numerous Obama scandals. And this latest effort, he looks into the Obama scandal uh, that has to do with the unmanned drones in America and abroad. Here's John Bowne. As was true in previous armed conflicts, this new technology raises profound questions about who is targeted and why. Simply put, these strikes have saved lives. The, the drone kills from June 2004 to September 2012, so this includes George W. Bush's drones as well as uh, Barack Obama's, in Pakistan alone killed between 2,500 and 3,300 people. Between 475 and 884 were civilians and 176 were children. And this is a program in which the executive branch, the president, claims the authority to unilaterally declare people enemies of the state, including U.S. citizens, and order their killing based on secret legal criteria, secret process, and secret evidence. There is no national security policy that poses a greater, uh, graver threat to human rights law and civil liberties than this policy today. But now we're talking about one step further. We're not talking about searching someone's house. We're talking about actually an execution or killing of an American on our soil. The technology that's currently available and has been demonstrated at military bases uh, throughout the world far exceeds commander's willingness to use it on a battlefield because it is so new and so different and they're uncertain about what if something goes wrong? And it has been remarkably successful. But let me take this at, to... At killing people. At, yes, it at, has. At, at decimating taking bad out. people. Taking out bad people. And taking out a lot and, of innocent and people saving, as well. And saving American lives in the process because our troops don't have to go and do this. If you are identified as a threat by some nameless official in the administration, would you want due process? We killed tens of thousands of American citizens, maybe hundreds of thousands with no due process whatever in the Civil War. And it was the right thing to do. And we've got to make sure that uh, in whatever operations we conduct, um, you know, we are very careful about avoiding civilian casualties. And those people were murdered by President Obama on his orders because there was believed to be someone from Al-Qaeda in that area. There's only one person that's been identified that had any connection to Al-Qaeda there. And, and 21 women and 14 children were killed in that strike. And the U.S. tried to cover it up and say it was a Yemeni strike. And we know from the WikiLeaks cables that David Petraeus conspired with the president of Yemen to lie to the world about who did that bombing. And yet, as our fight enters a new phase, America's legitimate claim of self-defense cannot be the end of the discussion.
All right, thank you, John Bound. That brings us to our quote of the day. This from Vince Lombardi, the best coach of all time, perhaps. Confidence is contagious, and so is the lack of confidence. Hey, that's going to do it for the first half of our show. The InfoWars will return shortly. When we come back, you are going to see a veteran of the Black Panther Party as he has a very special message for Barack Hussein Obama, my good friend Larry Pinckney, when we return right after this. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. If I were speaking to Obama, I think that I would have to say, where is your heart? Where is your integrity? Where is your humanity? Do you know what those words mean? Do you have any concept of what those words mean? You, 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 have, you have used and abused and hurt all the people, including black people, and you continue to do so. You speak in your fancy language using your fancy rhetoric, but you continue to hurt the people nationally and globally. Are you human? I would have to ask you, Barack Obama, are you human? Do you even know what being human means? It's important to understand, uh, for those of you who have not seen uh, the Obama deception, the first uh, particular film, please check it out. Let's understand that the Obama deception is much, much deeper than being merely an Obama deception. In fact, what it is, is a continuation of the same old agenda, the same old disempowering, manipulating, and controlling agenda. Now, why was it important? Why was it important uh, that Mr. Hope and Change, Mr. Barack Obama, now known as Drone Man in the year 2013, 
Obama. Why was it important that uh, the power elite uh, push him to be uh, uh, top dog, as it were? You know, or maybe we should actually say top murderer. But anyway, why was it important? Well, it was important because they used this. Pigmentation. Oh, he's black. He's black. He's got to be okay. Excuse me? Think about that. This was used. This is how I often speak of how racism, I call it an introverted or inverted rather, an inverted racism where Obama knew full well that he was being installed by the powers that be, whether they be left or whether they be right or whether they be liberal or whatever they want to call themselves. Obama knew full well that his job would be to continue the agenda for the power elite. To continue, and it, by the way, this power elite is both national and global. It's not just in the United States. In fact, it, it, it is a global power elite. It is an elite that I use the term a lot, blood sucks. They're blood suckers. You ever think about vampire? Every time I, 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 I decide to kick back and watch an old movie from the 50s or 60s and I watch uh, Bella Lugosi come out and, and uh, play the vampire, I can't help but think of this system because they're sucking the blood economically, politically, socially, Culturally, they're sucking our blood in that sense. Um, Obama serves as, at this point in time, uh, the, 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 the number one blood sucker, or at least in terms of, of his usefulness, and I put the word usefulness in quotation marks, because he certainly is not useful for everyday black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. He is the antithesis, if you will, the antithesis of the needs, wants, and desires of the people. Uh, so let's remember that that deception is a continuation of the deception that started eons ago. But Obama was the right person, in quotation marks, at the right time to continue to dupe the people. That's why you had... Republicans coming out, oh yes, Obama, Democrats, oh yes, Obama. Hey folks, whenever you see that, you better stop and think. You better stop and think because both of them, Democrats and Republicans, their, their so-called leadership, and I call it their misleadership, feed from the same corporate, national, and global trough. So the Obama deception is a deception against all of the people, nationally and globally. And I want you to keep that in mind. It's important that we keep that in mind. It's, it's a national and global deception. The wars, the perpetual wars that we have, the perpetual corporate hegemony, and all I mean by corporate hegemony is domination. Why is that? Did it happen by osmosis? No, it happened by design. This is going on by design. All right? We have to understand that it's not that complicated. Actually, it's very simple. You know, they say that the best tricks are the old tricks, and the old tricks are the best tricks. You know why? Because they work. But the old tricks stop working once people wake up, because you can't fool all the people all the time. And more and more people are waking up to this deception. And it is a despicable deception. All of us have been deceived. Regardless as to what ideology we may think we adhere to, we have all been deceived. We have allowed ourselves to be deceived. And this just goes on and on and on uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a circle. It's cyclical. But what we have to do, break out of the box, break that cycle. We can do that. We've got to do that. You know, somebody once said that every generation needs a new revolution. No, that wasn't Malcolm X. That was Thomas Jefferson, and he was absolutely correct. It's important to understand that what we, and when I say we, I'm talking about we, everyday people of humanity, everyday ordinary people, are dealing with, is we're dealing with creatures 
dare say I human, human creatures, who really lack, as in L-A-C-K, they lack the human qualities that all of us should have. In other words, no empathy, empathy. I didn't say sympathy, I said empathy for humanity. It's important to understand that the national global elite is aware that ultimately by dumbing us down, by clamping down on the free flow of information, by propagating disinformation, that ultimately uh, their blood sucking and by killing Mother Earth will lead to their own annihilation. Then why do they do it? Because, my friends, they are avaricious. Again, it's sort of like a vampire who sucks the blood. It's like it's, it, they have an insatiable appetite that can never, ever be filled. They are soulless, without soul, without soul. And all of us should have somewhere deep in our own human being, deep in our being, as humans, we should have souls. But we're dealing with an elite, a national and global elite, who lack that. Instead, they are willing to destroy us all, if only for the pleasure, ever so short-lived, of greed, of trying to fulfill their insatiable greed, of taking over a world, even ultimately a world, that if we allow them to do it, will ultimately be destroyed by them. So it's our obligation to recognize and to understand that literally, quite literally, everything is at stake. These folks, Though they may smile, just as Obama smiles, he smiles. But when I look at his smile, I see only death. I see only drone missiles. I see only lies and deceit. But it's not just Obama. It's all that he represents. Perhaps one of the most insidious and sadistic things about the continuation of this agenda uh, to, to, to control, to manipulate, to bloodsuck uh, people all over the world, including in this nation, on the part of Barack Obama and his minions, is the fact that this is well thought out. This is done in, in, in a fashion where people uh, have been so insidiously divided. For example, let me, let me be very specific of what, what I mean by this. If George W. Bush had engaged in anywhere near the uh, horrible atrocities, he'd carried out anywhere near those kinds of atrocities. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly no supporter of George W. Bush, but let's be real, let's be honest. Had he done that, why, you would have had liberals and progressives and the so-called left. Oh, they would have been out there saying, no way. You can't commit these cold-blooded murders. You can't do this. You can't do this. And they would have been right, except for one thing. Now that Barack Obama has not only done that, but he's gone far, far, far past. He has surpassed what Bush ever did, which was bad enough. He has surpassed that. Where are they? Where are these folks who, who supposedly cared about humanity? Where are these folks who supposedly had principles? This is what, again, we see playing out, that fake, phony, left-right paradigm. We see it playing out. And this is also why the Obama deception was and continues to be up to a point so insidious, so very, very sinister and insidious. So let's remember that we,
collectively, and I say collectively, all I mean is across the board, that we are the ones who can, we're the only ones, in fact, who can break through, who can dispense with that deception. The Obama deception, no more. No more Obama deceptions, whatever name they may give it. No matter. And it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's not about blood-sucking. It's about all the people. All the people. That's what this is about. No one's sitting here. I'm not sitting here and saying, oh, vote Republican. By no means. I'm not saying that. I'm not sitting here saying, well, vote for a better Democrat. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying vote with your feet. Vote with the people. Everyday people who look and act and care and think and feel just like you of all colors, the colors of the rainbow, all of us. That's who we vote for and with. You know, I re it re I'm reminded of something that W.E.B. Du Bois said. He said, may God forgive us if we ever again vote Democrat or Republican. This was W.E.B. Du Bois. Look it up. Check it out for yourself. Understand that this, 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 this agenda, this agenda is still being carried out, and the agenda remains the same. And under Barack Obama, it has become even worse. But the beauty, the beauty of it is that we also have a potential, a potential now that we may not have had before. And that potential is to wake all of us up. Get out of that paradigm. I'm right wing, I'm left wing, I'm a liberal. How about just being a person? How about just being a populace? How about just having principles? Stick to your principles. Be principled about this struggle for all of humanity. Be principled about that, please. That's what this is about. Obama is, in my words, probably the most dangerous weapon that this century has yet seen. You know, the South African activist uh, Steve Biko said that the most powerful, most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And Steve Biko was absolutely correct. Indeed, in that respect, in that sense, Obama is indeed a weapon. He is a weapon against every day black, white, brown, and yellow people. Obama has demonstrated uh, the, the uh, ability, and I use that word in quotation marks, to distort everything. In other words, let me give, use an example. Uh, when it comes to war, somehow Obama makes war seem to be not only acceptable, but absolutely necessary, imperative, even good, if you will. All in the name, simultaneously, all in the name of saying he's anti-war. He's anti this. He's anti that. Virtually everything Barack Obama says he opposes, he supports. And we need to understand that. That's why he is a weapon, such a, an insidious and powerful weapon. We have to look at him for what he is, not for what we want him to be. Too many people got caught in the trance looking at Obama not for what he is, but for what they wanted him to be. We have to look at Obama, and people just like him don't care about what their color or their gender is, for what they really are versus what we had hoped they would be. So this weapon, which he is, he is a weapon against everyday ordinary people of all colors. This is the weapon, to borrow the FBI's infamous term, this is the weapon that needs to be neutralized. And when I say neutralized, I mean so that it not be misconstrued. I mean politically. We must come, and conscious-wise, we must come to an understanding that he must not be allowed to continue to hold us, uh, to mesmerize us, 
we, we've got to get out of this, this, this ridiculous, dangerous trance that we're in. No more weapons. And Obama right now, presently, is probably the most powerful weapon against everyday people. You know, the, 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 when I think back uh, to, for example, John F. Kennedy, JFK, uh, and I'm certainly not romanticizing uh, the Kennedy's period, be it, John F., be it John F. K. or Robert Kennedy. However, I will say this. Uh, there were certain fundamental things that uh, John F. K. did attempt, uh, JFK did, did attempt to do uh, that did have a fundamental effect of helping, assisting uh, the poor in this country, the poor of all colors, all colors. Uh, also, there were fundamental things that uh, Kennedy, in this respect, uh, did, for example, uh, where the CIA wanted uh, Kennedy to go and, in quote, smash Cuba, despite international law, despite all kinds of things, Kennedy said no. Now, again, I want to emphasize, I am not romanticizing Kennedy, but when we compare, for example, uh, this uh, president, this former president, with this current president, one has to ask, have we moved forward or have we moved backwards? Clearly, we have moved backwards and we're moving rapidly backwards and we will continue to move backwards until we break free of this Obama trance. Right now, Obama is the best they have. And we have to reject that. When I say the best, I don't mean in a good or positive sense. I mean he is the most effective weapon that they have, the, the power elite, the globalists, against the people of this nation and the world. Once we deal with him, it becomes far less difficult. It will be difficult, but far less difficult to deal with their next tricks, because they always have tricks. But we, our trick is not a trick. What we have is each other, and it's way more of us than of them. What about Africa? What about what Barack Obama has done and is doing in Africa? The mother of civilization, all civilization. What about Africa? What's happening? Well, you know, in the, the, the first uh, film, The Obama Deception, it was predicted, and rightly so, it has been proven to be correct, that uh, Obama and his minions would be attacking Africa, would be developing war plans and carrying out those war plans. Did that happen? Did it actually happen? It most certainly did. Think back with me for just a few moments. Think back to Libya. Libya on the African continent. Think back to how this sovereign nation was bombed to smithereens. By whom? George W. Bush? No. Barack Obama. Think about it. Think about the fact that not only in Libya, in North Africa, but also in Somalia, drones are being used to indiscriminately bomb. And there's no such thing, by the way, as a smart missile or a smart bomb. Only dummies think that there are smart missiles and smart bombs or smart drones. But being bombed to smithereens, the massacres that resulted for example, in Libya, North Africa, as a result of the destabilization by Barack Obama and his minions. The, the, the horrible human disaster where we're talking 40 to 50 to 100,000 people being massacred. Do you think for an instant Obama didn't know that this is what would occur? Of course he knew. The whole thing was meant to destabilize Africa, okay, whether it was Libya, North Africa, Somalia, East Africa, whether it was uh, um, Syria, think about what's happening in Syria today, Syria being very, very, very uh, um, 
close to the African continent, by close I'm speaking in geographical terms. Think about these things. AFRICOM, have you heard of AFRICOM? AFRICOM, the militarization by the Obama regime of the African continent. The militarization for the purpose of using African armies to kill each other, acting as proxies for the power elite of the U.S. In this case, acting as proxies, proxies, if you will, for Barack Obama. Now, there were those uh, back in 08, 2008, 2009, when we predicted that these things, or it was predicted that these things would take place, who said, oh, no, not Obama. <laughs> not Obama, you don't understand. <laughs> He's black. Think about it. Think about the bloodshed. Think about the destabilization of, of, of the mother continent. Think about it. And she's our mother, just like this planet is our mother Earth. Think about what has been done. That was a crass and continues to be a crass deception. Remember, if you, if you haven't looked up AFRICOM, look it up. Google it. A-F-R-I-C-O-M, AFRICOM the proxy for the United States to continue to militarize the African continent, to militarize it so that Africans are killing Africans. So you keep the continent divided. You keep uh, uh, the people manipulated and controlled. There are pogroms that are going on, pogroms, that's right, P-O-G-R-O-M-S, going on right now throughout various parts of Africa. Thanks to whom? Barack Obama his regime. We need to understand, be we black, white, brown, red, or yellow, we need to understand that what is at stake here is our very existence. I urge you to give serious thought to that. And again, I reiterate once more, don't be deceived again. There's a song back in the day, uh, I think it was sung by a group called The Who. I love the song. We don't get fooled again. Let's not get fooled again. Let's not be deceived again. When we think of our mother Africa, and I do say our mother Africa, I don't care what your color is. When we think of our mother Africa, think of Barack Obama and the devastation and the lies that this man has told and the devastation that he has brought upon humanity and upon our mother continent, our mother continent, and our planet, Mother Earth. Doesn't have to be this way. Don't have to be deceived again. And as the song from back in the day said, we won't get fooled again. You know, the question comes to mind, well, how can we avoid being deceived again? What's to stop us from succumbing to another uh, deception? Let's go back to that word, or go to the word principles. If we have principles, if we stick to our principles, however challenging that may be, and sometimes it will be challenging, but if we stick to those principles, we can avoid being sucked down the toilet. We can avoid uh, being once again duped. Let's maintain our principles. Let's be honorable with each other, however difficult and challenging it may be. Because in the final analysis, that's how we will avoid yet another deception. You know, one of the things that I feel extremely uh, honored, delighted, happy to have experienced in my life was I had the opportunity to see and meet uh, Brother Malcolm X, uh, El Haj Malik El Shabazz. Uh, this was back in the day, as I would say, way back in the day. This was actually around 1961. Uh, I was a youngster, uh, about 11 or 12 years old, and um, was, had, had the opportunity to be taken to Morgan State College in Baltimore, Maryland, now Morgan State University. And uh, my cousin, um, who was at the time a student at that particular institution, uh, was among the students who brought uh, Brother Malcolm in to speak. Uh, I was there, as I said, um, and saw 
Brother Malcolm, had the chance to, to listen to him, speak with him. Um, and the thing that really touches me to this very day about uh, that conversation uh, was Malcolm's for realness. One of the reasons that I admire Malcolm so much, um, and this is not about the cult of the personality, this is just about human being to human being. One of the reasons I admire Brother Malcolm is because he evolved. When, when Malcolm uh, came to realize that he was mistaken about something, he was human enough to say, I was mistaken about that. I'm using the example of how Malcolm grew from being a mere cultural, a cultural black nationalist to an internationalist, to uh, someone who believed in uh, the need for humanity to come together as a whole. And what I remember when I saw Malcolm uh, was his, his humanity. Malcolm had a smile that would blow your mind, as we used to say back in the day. He could walk into a room and you could be engaged in an intense conversation and Malcolm would smile and you would just be engulfed by his humanity, as was I. Uh, being as young as I was, I read a lot. I was an avid reader. My, my parents were both school teachers, poor, but school teachers, so they believed strongly in reading, in studying, in debating, uh, etc. Anyway, at that young age, I could sense that Malcolm was first and foremost a human. And he spoke not down to me, but he spoke with me. And to this very day, decades later, many decades later, I think that's what I think of when I, when I think of Brother Malcolm, a man of great humanity, a man of wit, of intellect, but most of all, a human who evolved constantly. Which leads me into uh, a topic that is sometimes very difficult for me to, uh, to discuss, uh, and that is COINTELPRO, C-O-I-N-T-E-L-P-R-O, the counterintelligence program. The counterintelligence program, of course, being a program that was set up, uh, begun actually back in the 50s, it was intensified in the 60s and 70s and continued, and I would submit to you that COINTELPRO continues today. Now, what was COINTELPRO? COINTELPRO was a uh, um, program that was set up by the federal government throughout this nation, not just one part, but throughout the United States, to, quote, to frame, to discredit, to neutralize, to imprison, and in many, many cases, to murder political activists across the board. Not only black political activists, but black, white, brown, red, yellow. People in this country, citizens of this country, who dared to challenge, to question, to oppose the, the, the narrative, the propaganda, if you will, of, of the U.S. government. Now, this is the year 2013. Does COINTELPRO still exist? I would submit to you adamantly that COINTELPRO does exist, in fact, has been tweaked it has morphed into something even worse, even stronger. Uh, whether we're talking about how COINTELPRO, uh, COINTELPRO has been put into uh, the Patriot Act, how COINTELPRO has been put into the NDAA, the so-called uh, National Defense Authorization Act, particularly provision 1021, how COINTELPRO has been applied and put into drone man Barack Obama's kill list. That's right. We have a president, think about it, who has his very own secret kill list. That means, brothers and sisters, you can be killed in your home. You can be killed in, while you're doing shopping. Your loved ones can be set up and or killed. Uh, that's the reality. Now, does that mean that we, we should become paranoid? Absolutely not. Absolute, absolutely not. But what we need to do is we need to understand that COINTELPRO exists and it is functioning. Uh, and in fact, in the year 2013, this year, uh, with 
uh, Barack Obama, whom I call the drone missile man or the drone man, the kill list man, it is worse now than ever before on every level. And it affects all of us, not just black folk, white folk, brown folk, all of us, black, white, brown, red, yellow, across the board. The only way that we can effectively uh, resist COINTELPRO is to, one, be aware of it. If we're going to put out a fire, we have to be aware that the fire is engulfing our home, that the fire is raging. So before we can address that and put that fire out, we have to first be aware of it. It's the same with uh, the counterintelligence program. We are told that uh, we have a constitution in this country. Well, what we have in this country in this year of 2013 is we have a piece of paper that has in very large part been made null and void by both Democrats and Republicans and definitely, most definitely, by the current chief executive and commander-in-chief of the, of the United States Armed Forces, none other than Mr. Barack Obama. So if one has a constitution, it is irrelevant if it is not applied. What good is that? It, what good is there to have a constitution uh, if, if that a constitution is not a living constitution? It's not really applied. Freedom of speech, freedom of organi to, or, to organize, freedom uh, uh, to, to be able to have dissenting views. These things are incredibly important. These thi are the very kinds of things that COINTELPRO seeks to, in the words of the FBI, neutralize, to destroy. So I think it's incumbent upon all of us, all of us throughout the United States and indeed throughout the world, but I'm pri primarily referring to people in this, in this nation, it's incumbent upon us to understand the danger that we are in, the peril. We must first recognize our peril in order to do something about it. And we can do something about it. We can do something about it. We must do this collectively. It's time to get past that phony, fake, farce, left-right paradigm. That's how they keep us united uh, or disunited because they don't want us to be united. That's how they keep us disunited. They keep us in disarray. They keep us divided. They keep us in fear of each other. It's like a, a ping pong ball in a ping pong game. We're the ping pong ball. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Only, brothers and sisters, we're the ball. We're the ones who are going back and forth. And this corporate stream media, uh, ABC, CBS, PBS, Fox News, the corporate stream media, all of them, are about putting forth a narrative that is meant to keep us divided, controlled, manipulated, in fear of each other, and, and, and this is what we have to do something about. And only we, from the bottom up, not from the top down, not from the top down, from the bottom up, um, we have to recognize, I look at it like a pyramid. The pyramid has a huge, huge base at its bottom. The top, the point, is, is quite small. It's what I call the power elite, the national and global power elite, who control our lives. Not only do they control our lives in a physical sense, but first and foremost, they control our lives psychologically. Make sure we think a certain way, if you, indeed you can call it thinking, because they really don't want us to critically think. They want us to be numb. They want us to, to, to act, as I say, like robotrons without even realizing that we're acting like robotrons, robots, okay? But again, I go back to the power of the people. Back in the day, in the original Black Panther Party, not to be confused with the so-called new Black Panther Party, in the original Black Panther Party formed in October of 1966, um, the party said then, and I still say now, all power to the people. What did we mean by that? We meant that ultimately all power, all power rests with each of us, but the only way we're going to be effective is to reach out to each other. Whether we agree or disagree, we'd sure as heck better come to the recognition or come to a recognition that without each other, we are powerless, but with each other, we are strong. 
So having said those things, I want to emphasize that COINTELPRO does continue today. The counterintelligence program did not go away. We have to ask ourselves, what would Brother Malcolm X have to say? What would Malcolm say about Obama's drones in Somalia, Pakistan, Bahrain, uh, um, Afghanistan, so, so forth and so on? What, what would Brother Malcolm say? What would Brother Malcolm say about Obama's signing of the NDAA with special emphasis on the provision section on, or provision 1021? What would Brother Malcolm say? What would Brother Malcolm say about Obama's secret kill list, murder list, M for murder? What would Brother Malcolm say? Malcolm said that right is right and wrong is wrong, no matter who says it or who does it. Obviously, that in and of itself tells us that Malcolm would be repulsed, repulsed, by the, the despicable, hypocritical, deceitful actions of Barack Obama and his minions. Obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. We, too, should, be, should find Obama's actions and his deception to be repugnant. We, we should not allow his deceit to trick us anymore. In the words of Brother Malcolm, we have a debt to all of humanity. And I'm sure, I'm sure you are too, very sure that Brother Dr. Martin Luther King would have said the same thing. He said, didn't he, to judge people based on what? The content of their character, not the color of their skin. It is time for us to actualize that. Both Malcolm and Martin would be right there with all of us, irrespective of our color. So what would Malcolm say about Obama? I think you know full well that Malcolm would say he is unacceptable to humanity. You know, if not if, when we break free of and from the trance that Obama has us in, this Obama trance, then we are capable of breaking free from all of these trances. Because the Obama trance is probably the single most powerful, debilitating one that has yet been brought about in the 21st century. So we have to, to, to break that trance. You remember when, when you were a kid and you first turned on the television and how magical it was to you? Wow, you looked at the screen and you saw people, you saw vehicles, you saw all kinds of things on that screen. It was like it was magic. But then as you grew older, you realize that, no, it really wasn't magic at all. It was technology, not magic. You broke the trance. This is what we must do with Barack Obama. Obama was successfully, he and his handlers, to put people in a trance. We must turn off that television set euphemistically speaking as the example I just gave, and break that trance. Understand that it's not magic. It's a trance, or as Malcolm X would say, it's Novocaine. Get out of it. Get out of it. Break that Obama trance, because once we do that, it becomes so much easier to break the other trances that they, and who do I mean by they, the power, the national and global power elite, the globalists, are going to be pushing more trances toward us, but it's going to be far more difficult because we have already, or will have already, broken free from the Obama trance. Why is it that we are 
in this nation and in many nations throughout the world for that matter, why are we continuing to uh, find ourselves in a developing de facto police state? Why? I mean, is this just happening or is it happening by design? I think that when we give it serious thought, we find out that it is, in fact, happening by design. Uh, the globalists, those who want to control humanity, have an agenda, and that agenda is to do what? That agenda is to squeeze us in every conceivable manner, politically, economically, socially, culturally, spiritually even to squeeze us. That is the global agenda. Now, this is why we see, and there's a positive side, and the positive side is this. Obviously, people throughout the world are beginning to wake up. People throughout uh, the United States are beginning to wake up. We've got a lot more waking to do, a lot more awakening to do. But it has begun. Again, I go back to the words of Thomas Jefferson, every generation needs a new revolution. And this uh, response is by the global, the globalist, the global elite, the power elite, is to do what? Is to clamp down, to clamp down, to clamp down on people's civil rights, human rights, I like the word human rights because we're all first and foremost human. And that's the emphasis. That's where the emphasis, I think, really should be on human rights. But it is showing they are, they, who am I talking about? The global elite, the power elite, nationally and globally, are re reacting to people awakening. Sometimes, you know, they, they say that, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what the saying was, but it goes something like um, uh, a, silver, a silver lining on the dark cloud. The silver lining in this case is that people are reaching a point, not only are they saying, I'm beginning to see, I'm beginning to understand, but we're reaching a point where we're saying no more, no more. And that's a positive. The beauty is, as we said back in the day, the beauty is, is that the power, it's people power. It's all of us together. Not us divided, separated, killing each other, in fear of each other. Let's understand who the real terrorists are. The real terrorists, really, are the global elite. Those who want to keep us in fear, keep us divided. But remember, with all their chicanery, with all of their machinations, with all of their deceit, what it shows is that people, all of us, are truly beginning to awaken. So let us be positive, almost joyful. Let us be positive about the fact that we are beginning to awaken. Let us be determined to continue to learn from each other. In, in the columns that I write in Black Commentator and in Intrepid Report, I always ended by saying, each one, reach one. Each one, teach one. Onward then, my sisters and brothers. Onward. So let's keep on reaching out, teaching. That's the only way that we will not be deceived again. There's a lot to be happy about, but we haven't gotten to that point yet where we can say we won't get fooled again. We've got to get to that point. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show.